at the uppermost part of the Muddy River system. Uh, there's five major springs here and countless smaller springs that all emanate in this area. Water comes out of the ground about 90 degrees. The source of this water is mountains in eastern Nevada, up around Ely, Nevada, maybe the Snake Range and some of the other mountains. The water flows down into the ground up there. It pops up in various places, like around Lund and Peranagat. Some faulting here forces the majority of the water flowing down that pluvial White River system uh, up to the surface here at Warm Springs here at Moapa. The multiple springs come together and form the Muddy River, which flows into Lake Mead and the Colorado River. You know, the Mwapadase is endangered, and in order to manage it, we have to, uh, we want to uh, observe its numbers over time and over space. So uh, we're lucky in that it lives in pretty small springs and, and up to the Muddy River, where at the Muddy River, the water's getting big enough, it's kind of hard to survey fish by snorkeling. But through most of the system, snorkeling works really well to count the fish. And what we do is we put on snorkel masks and swim upstream so that we're in clear water. And as the fish go by us, we keep a count. And it turns out to be a really effective way to, to count Moapa dace. So 30 mollies and two adult dace. So not only are we getting the numbers periodically, right now we're doing it twice a year, but it helps us literally get our eyes on the ecosystem. And that's really useful to, to detect like invading species or maybe there's, you know, a pipe that's broke and then other just problems with the flow. We're looking at that pretty much all the time. And then we also record where we're getting these numbers of fish and, we're, and the fish are basically telling us what they like as we're restoring the habitat. So it's a great feedback loop for us to learn what the fish needs. The fish in the river, um, you know, they prefer warmer water so they tend to be up near the the headwaters of, of the Muddy River, some of the springs that feed in. Um, they like quite a bit of current, so they'll, they'll uh, often be seen swimming just kind of in the middle of the water, kind of with a rapid movement riding in the current. And they're drift feeders, so that means they like to eat little bits of food that are flowing past them, so they'll just stay in the current and uh, pick off little bits of food. Um, a lot of times you'll have what we call drift stations, that form in pools right below logs or other types of underwater structure that gives a slight break in the current and provides a little deeper water um, but still gives a good good area for the fish to feed and when you're snorkeling and trying to count these fish you really look for those those types of areas because um, you can just kind of sit there and they'll swim in front of you and you do your best to count them. And so this fish is a little minnow. I mean, it's susceptible to a lot of predators. They, they can get up to about six inches long, but because they haven't had access to the muddy river in the last couple decades, they're usually three and a half, four inches or smaller. But one of the things we're able to do is go out and count these fish where we've done different restoration projects. And we can actually do a restoration project and see the fish respond. Or maybe in a few cases, they don't like it. And we say, oh, what, what's wrong? And, and it helps us learn how to manage this fish. And so we have a great group of people here working together, a partnership that involves federal agencies, state agencies, the county, Clark County, a uh, couple several utility districts, the Southern, Southern Nevada Water Authority being a very important one, and Nevada Energy is helping with this, and private landowners in the area. So we're fortunate with the Muddy River ecosystem and Moapa Days that it's a fairly confined system. It's really not that large geographically, and we do have a wildlife refuge that uh, protects three of the spring heads and the flow that the fish rely on. And then the Southern Nevada Water Authority has this Warm Springs natural area behind me that protects four of the, the, the other four springheads. And those seven springheads are the entire universe for this 
fish. They live nowhere else on Earth. 